Hello, this is my 2020 Kubota B2401, small utility tractor. It has a loader, a uh, backhoe, although it's not on it right now, and a few other little things. Um, the most interesting thing about this tractor versus, say, the 2601 or the B2301 tractors, which are similar, is that this one has a gear drive transmission. Um, I bought this because I prefer gear drive transmissions, uh, whether it's manual transmission cars or tractors, it's just what I prefer, it's a preference thing. Uh, honestly, for most of the tasks that I do, a hydrostatic would probably be better, but this is what I enjoy, I enjoy driving it. There are some things to consider if you are thinking about buying one versus the B2301 or the 2601 hydrostatic machines is that this gear drive transmission is not the same as what you would expect in like a car. Um, it's three speeds, including reverse, um, but it doesn't shift um, like you think. It's a uh, sliding mesh transmission. If you've never driven an unsynchronized transmission before, this might be a new thing to you. Um, basically the gist is that you cannot easily shift gears while you're moving. Uh, it's possible, but it's not something that you would just do like you do in a manual transmission car where you just go for a second. It's no big deal. Uh, there's no synchronizers in this transmission. And I'll go more into the, the operation of it later. Um, otherwise, floor controls. The brakes are on the right, two pedals, one for each side, although I currently have them bound together with the small latch there. Um, but you can do differential braking if, if that's what you want to do. Uh, there's a throttle pedal right here. Um, it is exactly the same in operation as the hand throttle, except that the hand throttle goes and it stays. The floor pedal goes and returns. Uh, their linkages are connected to the same mechanism they connect to the governor on the engine and it sets the engine speed. It's another important note when you're dealing with tractors like this is that the engine is governed. It's uh, the throttle input that you give it is not necessarily the throttle input for the engine. It is setting the engine speed. So if you push the gas pedal to half position, that's not half throttle, that's half speed. The engine will use up to full throttle if necessary to maintain that engine speed. So that's something that's uh, maybe slightly different if you're used to cars or trucks. Um, otherwise, controls I think are pretty similar to the other two tractors of similar size. Uh, Four-wheel drive, engage, disengage, uh, three-point hitch, uh, position control. Going around to the other side. The secondary transmission is here, three speeds just like the others. It's also a sliding mesh transmission, uh, I believe. Uh, and then this particular tractor, I don't think the others have this, a two-speed PTO. So there's the 540 RPM at the rear, which is what you'd expect, neutral, and then 1,000 RPM at the rear. Uh, this is quite handy if you run, say, a direct drive wood chipper. Um, they run a lot better at 1,000. A few other things run at 1,000 RPM. And then also the mid PTO, 2,500 RPM, which I believe is similar or the same as the other uh, two tractors. Uh, this particular one is equipped with a mid-mount mower, although it's not installed right now. This is the height control for it. It sets a stop limit to how low the deck will travel. This is the three-point hitch lift cylinder flow control valve. Um, this sets the speed at how fast the three-point hitch will come down. I think this is the same as the other tractors. Uh, differential lock foot pedal. Uh, I think that's similar. Uh, loader control lock pedal or a lever. Um, you can, if you want, lock the loader so that the handle does not actually operate anything. Nice if you uh, are running without the loader on and you don't want to accidentally bump it, etc. So I leave that off for now. Um, because it is the backhoe model, the seat will swivel around. There's a lever under here. You can pull it, it lifts up rotates 180 degrees and locks into the backwards position. Uh, the backhoe subframe is this piece right here. Um, it goes all the way to the loader mounts on the front of the tractor so actually I think it adds a lot of rigidity to the machine. Uh, even if you're not running 
the backhoe at the moment. It bolts to the flanges for the um, axle carrier housing, where the bearings are, uh, and runs all the way, all the way up to the front of the machine and then here to the uh, base of the loader posts. So I think that's pretty strong. And then the loader posts, of course, are heavily reinforced to the frame, lots of bolts there. Um, these are the arms for the mid-mount mower. The mower would go here and it drops down um, according to the height. It operates on the same lift mechanism as the three-point hitch. There's a, a linkage that goes to these arms. Uh, the mid-PTO is right there. Currently disconnected, of course. Um, under the machine, about what you would expect. Front wheel drive shaft, pretty robust looking frame. Um, front axle over there. Uh, on this side, we have, of course, the clutch pedal. Um, it has a latch here. You could, if you're going to not drive it for a long period, you could uh, lock it with the pedal held down so the clutch released to prevent the clutch disc from fusing to the flywheel, which can happen in a vehicle that sits for a long period with the clutch engaged. And then the loader, it's got the removable loader just like the others. I think the loader is exactly the same as the other two. Um, I have an everything attachments, uh, I think they call it wicked bucket, uh, with the tooth bar. If you're going to do any sort of earth moving with it, like I'm trying to build a, a building, um, the normal bucket with just a straight edge, it works okay, but uh, a bucket with a tooth bar, whether it's this one or one like it, is immensely useful. It dramatically increases the amount of digging you can do. Um, this bucket is 54 inches wide, if I remember correctly, whereas my factory flat bucket is 60 inches. So I went slightly narrower when I bought this bucket because I wanted the highest possible penetration into the ground. So the same force over a smaller area is uh, better for that purpose. And then I have a 60 inch box blade by the same company. Uh, it works quite good. I recommend if you're doing earth moving to get a bucket or to get a, a box blade. They're very useful. I've found a lot of uses for mine. Other than that, I think we can go into the operation of the machine. So here we are at the console. I have this gauge kind of crudely attached. This is for another project, unrelated. It's not a factory uh, modification by any means. So this gauge and its wiring, you can ignore that if you're interested in one of these. Uh, so to start it, uh, just like any other tractor, you push the clutch in if it has it. Um, set the glow plug on. Glow plug, has lights, and engine start. Uh, I'm in neutral, so I'll let the clutch out while we sit here for a moment. In order to understand how to shift this transmission, you got to understand a little bit about how it works. Uh, there's a shaft on the input that goes to the engine. It's spinning with engine speed when the clutch is engaged. And another shaft that eventually goes to drive the wheels. Um, these shafts have to be at close to the same speed in order to shift this successfully because you got it, two meshes, teeth, spinning. And if they're spinning at different speeds, you're going to have a hard time meshing them up. Um, so I'll show you a little bit what I mean. Uh, if I have the clutch uh, disengaged right now, so the, or rather engaged, so the engine is spinning the input shaft. If I increase the engine speed, say all the way, and then I push the clutch in, it won't shift easily, right? That's because even though I had the clutch uh, disengaged when I tried to shift, the speed difference was still too high because of the inertia of the input shaft. So that's something to keep in mind. It takes a few moments for it to slow down from whatever speed it's at when you push the clutch in. That's the speed that it started at and it slows down. Uh, it gets more elaborate when you're also moving because when the wheels are turning, the output shaft is spinning. So you want the input and the output shafts to be at a fairly close speed if you're going to shift this thing on the move. Now the proper way to do it uh, as far as what the manual says and what I would recommend to anybody who's a beginner or or just wants to move this machine around without much trouble is to come to a full stop to shift gears. So if I come to a full stop like I am now and I push the clutch in, give it a few moments, uh, shaft to slow down, I can shift in any gear without any trouble. One thing that does happen 
is uh, the teeth are aligned for first gear and they happen to be aligned for second, but it's hard to go into third. I'm actually not in third. That's because the teeth are hitting their, they're hitting each other without being able to slide into each other. Something that I do is I quickly shift to any other gear, like reverse or whatever, and then try it. And it's still no good, so I'll just wiggle it around. There we go. So I just went from reverse to first, whatever, uh, and then eventually to third and it went in. Alternatively, you can try to go, like second gear right now is not, not going in. If I put some gentle pressure on it and slowly, very gently, ease back on the clutch, it'll go in. Once the clutch just barely starts to grab, the input shaft will begin to turn a little and they'll line up. Uh, that's something that is a little bit different if you're used to cars and stuff, is you got to envision how it works with the teeth. Secondly, the tractor is designed to be able to start from any gear. So I could start from the highest possible gear, it's just is not the easiest. I would only do that if I was on a flat surface or something like that where I didn't have much resistance. You don't want to ride the clutch on these very much. And that's true on a car too, but uh, on a machine like this, it would be not not very good for the clutch to, uh, to slip it very much at all. So, for example, with this machine, uh, I usually, when the clutch is coming out, I just release it, like, real quick. Uh, it's a little bit rough. When you when you run this thing with a loader, the rougher you run it with the clutch, the longer it will last. There's a balance, of course, you don't want to break anything, but um, if you're running the loader and you're going forward reverse and changing directions, changing speeds, if it's really smooth, um, that most likely means the clutch is seen somewhere. You don't want to be easing this out slowly like you would maybe on a car when you're starting, I just drop it um, for the most part. And you'll see once I start to drive, um, which actually we should do. So I'll, I'll get set up to drive here and it'll make a little more sense, hopefully. I don't know if you're going to hear me talk or not. Uh, this camera's a little bit far away at a weird angle and the cloud. But uh, I'm in medium range. I'm going to try to do some loader work and you'll be able to see how I run the clutch. I probably won't do much double clutching because I don't usually change speeds while moving that often. So when I'm in medium range, you can start out in third gear, no problem. That's what I do most of the time. Uh, so I'll run into a pile, pick up something in first, back out of it in reverse, then take off again in third, and run out to wherever I'm going to dump it. That's generally what I do. And it, I think it's the fastest way.
you're seeing me hit the brake a second time, um, that's because I let myself roll down the hill by gravity a little bit. Um, the mound that I'm making. And then, in order to switch to reverse, because I was in neutral previously, or any other gear, uh, I have to be at a complete stop. So, jam the brakes again, stop the wheels, shift to reverse, and I'm off. Unfortunately, I don't have a good uh, ability to give you a good view of all of the controls at the same time. Uh, if I had a GoPro on my head or something, maybe it would be better. I'm just using a cell phone and a little mount, kind of sticking it in different places. Uh, my amount of places I can put it are kind of limited, so uh, I would like to give you a view of all the pedals and controls at once, because it takes both hands, both feet, uh, all the time to run this thing. Uh, it's running like this anyway. Uh, I guess what I can do now is I can take it up on the road, and we can do some uh, double clutch operation in high range to get it up to full speed. Uh, double clutching um, is easier in a higher range because the speed difference between the two shafts is easiest to control. And it'll make more sense if you do it yourself, but I'll try to show it the best I can. All right, high range, first gear. I'm gonna pull out onto this main road here and we'll take off. this like I said is to start out in whatever gear you're going to be in. So I'll try starting in third high. It's a little bit tricky because that's a very tall gear for this machine. I may have to be a little slow with letting the clutch out. I don't like to do because it wears, you know, it has to wear to it, but we'll see how it goes. I'm in third high. That's how they tell you to do it in the manual. That's the easiest way, and that's how I would do it if I was starting out. But uh, I enjoy shifting, it's fun. It's uh, got some novelty to it, a little bit of tips and tricks to get going, but uh, once you get the feel for the machine, you really have to feel for it to understand and understand how the transmission functions. I'm going to turn around and head back. The gear drive thing, it's preference, um, and it depends on the type of work you're doing. Um, for mowing and field work and stuff like that, gear drive, pretty good. Uh, although mowing is a toss-up depending on how your mowing area is, if you have lots of obstacles or not. I would say majority of users, hydrostatic's the way to go. More flexible, more intuitive for the average person. You don't have to have a tremendous understanding of how it functions to run it. Anybody can run a hydrostat without any trouble usually. Here's some of the work that we did with our tractor just in that short video. Um, we dug this flat mostly. We pulled some out of these 
uh, hills at the end. And we built this pile over here. This is uh, where we dumped most of our spoils. Uh, it's probably waist high. I don't remember how many bucket loads that was. Not too many. It was going pretty quick there. Just scraping the top layer off of this dirt. Um, and you can see like when we went into some rough stuff where our tires were turning. Like this little... It's hard to see probably, but it's sunk down a little bit here. That's where we probably encountered that over there, which stopped the machine for a moment. Tire is still turning, dug this little trench. We made some adjustments to the loader, and then off we were. Um, that's kind of how I usually run it for this type of work, and it seems to work pretty well. In summary, um, don't be afraid of a gear drive if you understand the differences between this transmission and what you would find on a car or truck. The loader operation, as far as if I was given a job, move this pile from here to somewhere else, uh, hydrostat would be faster 100% of the time. Uh, but it is possible with the gear drive tractor and it's possible um, in a reasonably good time. Having a tooth bar helps a lot. One thing I should mention that's relevant to this video is the, I've made some small modifications to this tractor, uh, most notably the engine. The governor speed from the factory is set at, I believe, 24 or 2600 RPM. I think it's 2400 RPM. Um, however, the engine is good for 3000. The Kubota data sheet for this motor says 3000, um, although I'm sure the timing is slightly different. Um, so I have it set to 3000 RPM. I've done a little bit of math and it should be pretty safe for most things although if you're running a 540 or 1000 rpm implement definitely run it at the mark on the gauge you don't want to overspeed your implements um, putting it at 3000 rpm allows me to have a little bit higher travel speed which is nice although it's small small difference but it is there and um, I can get a little bit more hydraulic flow for the loader to run the loader a little faster although for the first uh, year or so that I owned this machine, I ran it at the factory settings, uh, 2400 RPM or 2600 maybe, and it was it was fine. There was no problem. Uh, but that is a small change I made. It's an easy adjustment to make if you have a even small understanding of how these injection pumps work. Uh, I have more modifications planned for the future, hence the pyrometer and whatnot. But that's another time. So I hope that helped. I hope that was relevant information. If you're looking to purchase a machine like this for a project, especially if you're doing some sort of earth moving project, um, I would probably not buy your machine based on your short term needs. If you're building a building, that's a short term project. Maybe it'll take you a year or whatever, but you're going to hopefully have the tractor a lot longer than that. So buy it for whatever your needs are long term. Um, in my case, uh, hydrostat would be better for this project for digging a building definitely doable with the gear machine for my other jobs I prefer the gear machine so that's what I have and I make do with it and it does just fine in my opinion so that's all hopefully that was helpful have a good day